What's going on everyone, Taylor Stein here, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to design a bash guard like the one that you see here using Fusion 360. So the first step is to take a picture of your board. Now you want this picture to be straight above the board and you want to be able to see the bolt hole pattern that holds the trucks. So it might be helpful to actually take off the trucks for the picture, that's what I did, and you can see the picture right here. Next, what we're going to do is bring that picture into Fusion 360 and use it as a reference. So here in a blank Fusion 360 design, what I'm going to do is head on over to the Insert drop-down menu, and I'll choose Attach Canvas. And as far as the face I want to attach it to, I can just choose this bottom plane here. And for the image, I'll go find the image that I grabbed from online. And let me just resize it so we can see what we're working with. So there's the picture. If I want to rotate it, I can do that. So let's rotate it 90 degrees. Look at it from the top. That looks pretty good. We're going to size this and calibrate it in the next step. One thing that's helpful is if this image is aligned with the origin. So if I drag this arrow over here, you'll see that the origin, this red line here stemming from the origin, doesn't really meet the middle of the board. So what I might want to do is adjust this until it lines up a little bit better, just so we have an easier job ahead of us. So with that done, I'm just going to turn the opacity up a little bit so I can see a little better and make sure that this display through box is checked. So I'll hit OK. And now what we can do is go ahead and calibrate it. And what calibrating does is take this image, which sort of has an unknown real world size, and it'll set it to a specific size in inches or millimeters or whatever we like inside of Fusion 360. So to do that, you just need to right click on where it says longboard deck or the name of your image and choose calibrate. And now we just pick two points on this image. So one thing that's handy about taking a picture with the trucks and all the hardware removed is that you can choose the center of these bolt holes here for our sort of calibration point. So I'm going to choose the middle and you are eyeballing it, but this should get you close enough is I'll pick the middle of this hole right here and the middle of this hole. And I know that just from reference or even measuring the board that this distance is 1.625 inches. So I'll type in 1.625 inch and hit enter and we'll see that our picture is calibrated. So now we have a picture that's actually sized properly. So for example, if I again click calibrate, I can choose these two points on the board and we can see that our board is 874 millimeters. That doesn't really mean anything to me. So let's change our units to inches choose calibrate and let's try that again. There we go, 34 inches. So everything seems about right. So next up, let's go ahead and create a quick little mock-up of our skateboard deck. And then after that, we'll model the actual bash guard. So to do that, I'm going to create a new component by clicking this button right here. And this component, I'm just going to call deck, hit OK. And this will just help us categorize everything and keep it nice and tidy inside of our fusion design. So now what I want to do is create a new sketch on this plane right here. And first I'm going to draw a line from the origin straight out to the end of the board. Finish that. And this is really just a reference line so I can select it and choose construction to turn it into a dashed line. So it's just there for reference. And now let's go ahead and grab our spline tool. So I can go sketch spline and I can draw sort of the curve of the board here. So I'm going to place one point here by clicking once and I'll place another point somewhere out here. We don't want to go too far. It's a little bit much. Somewhere over here should be good. And to not add any more points, I'll go ahead and hit the green check. And now we can go ahead and move the handles around until we match this curve of the board. And you'll see that right now the cursor is still active. So it's thinking that I want to draw more splines. But I don't want to do that. So I can hit escape to get out of the spline command. And now what I can do is I can drag the ends of these handles to adjust the tangency at those points. So I can adjust both their placement and the length of the handles. So I'm going to move these around until I match the curvature. So let's zoom in over here. And that looks pretty close on the nose. If you click in white space, it'll hide the handle so you can see it a little bit better. And that looks pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and mirror this line over to the other side. So to do that under the sketch menu, we can choose mirror. My object is this line and my mirror line is going to be this one. And we can see that either our sketch curve is a little bit incorrect or our canvas is a little bit wrong. So let's go ahead and edit our canvas again by right clicking on it and choosing edit canvas. And I'm just gonna nudge it up just a little bit to sort of even it out. 
that looks good. And now back inside my sketch, I can adjust these handles so I can move the points around. I can click on the line to get the handles back and I can adjust these handles until it matches up pretty well with the board. Obviously the more time you spend on this, the more accurate it's gonna be. So that looks pretty good to me. What I'm gonna do now is just draw a line that connects these two points. That way I have a closed profile that I can give some thickness to. So I'll hit stop sketch because I'm done sketching. And now under the create menu, I can choose extrude and select this profile and we can give it some thickness. So this board is about 11 millimeters. So I'll type in 11 millimeters and hit okay. And now we have uh, the base for that, the nose of the board modeled. A few things I wanna add, I can add a rounded edge here. There's no sharp edge on this board. So under modify, I can choose fillet, select this edge, and now I can apply a fillet until it matches. There we go. About what looks about right. So how about there? If when you're adjusting the fillet command, it's sort of jumping to certain amounts, what you can do is click on this button right here at the bottom and you can uncheck the incremental move. That'll give you nice and smooth movements throughout all the commands that you're using and I highly recommend it. So now what I can do is let's go ahead and model in the holes real quick. This will just make it a little bit easier when we make the actual bash guard. So to do that, I'll make another sketch on this face. I'll draw a line just from the middle of this edge. You'll see it snaps to the middle to the outermost edge right here. If it's a little bit unclear, I can just go too far, make sure that's horizontal and click and then hit escape. And I'll make this a construction line. And now let's go ahead and draw out some circles. So I can hit the C hotkey to draw a center diameter circle. And let's go ahead and I'm just gonna hide the body so it's a little bit easier to see. Let's just draw out some circles here. And I don't really care about their size at the moment. I'm just gonna draw all four. And I can now hit escape and we can add some constraints between these. So I know that I want all four of these to be the same size. So holding shift, I can select all four circles and I can choose the equal constraint. So now if I change the size of one of them, they all change. I also know that I want them to be vertically and horizontally aligned with each other. So let's go ahead and choose the center of this circle and the center of this one. And I can choose horizontal slash vertical. So now those should be horizontally aligned that way or vertically aligned, sorry. And let's go ahead and do the same for these over here as well as these over here. And now everything should be good, cool. So let's go ahead and now add some dimensions to these to define their size and location. So under the sketch menu, we can choose sketch dimension or hit the D hotkey. And these are about 0 0.20 inches. There we go. And if I hit D again, I can dimension the distance between these. This distance here is about 1.625. And this distance over here is around 2.125. And this is sort of a standard bolt hole pattern. And what I'm gonna do is now move these around until we match up pretty well with those holes in the background. And that looks good to me. So to make sure none of these move around, I can just click one of them and choose fix. And now that one is fixed in place and this one's still blue. Let's see what's up with this one. Okay, so this one is missing a constraint constraining it vertical to this one. So to fix that, I can choose this point here and I can say horizontal slash vertical and pick this point. I can hit escape and there we go. Now it's all defined. So I can hit stop sketch. Let's show the body of our deck. And I can choose the extrude command and let's select these four profiles. And I can extrude those up to go through the deck. And we'll see that by default, Fusion wants to perform a cut and this is correct. And now this is a little bit sloppy. The best way to do this is just drag it all the way through. And then instead of going some sort of arbitrary distance, what I like to do is change the extent from distance to all. And now this will extrude the correct amount that it needs. So if we change the thickness of our board, this will update as well. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now we've got sort of the nose of our deck modeled. So now what we can do is model the bash guard. So to do that, I'm going to return to the top level right here by clicking this button. And I can create another component. And let's just call this bash guard. And now I want this bash guard to start on the bottom of the deck. So I'll create a new sketch on this face right here. 
And now I'm going to draw out the rough shape that we want. So I want to make a bash guard that both protects the nose and I guess your shins and also acts as a riser. So it acts as a quarter inch riser here. So it sort of does both in one. So to do that, let's grab a rectangle. So sketch rectangle, two point rectangle. And let's just draw sort of an arbitrary rectangle right now. That looks about right. And then we can go ahead and add some dimensions or add some construction lines right now between the points. So let's go ahead and draw a line that connects the center of this circle and this one. I'll stop drawing that. And I'm just drawing these because these might come in handy as I position uh, the riser portion of this guard. So I'll turn these into construction lines. And now let's go ahead and dimension this. So I want this line right here to be the same size as a normal truck riser. So I went ahead and I measured that and I can now apply a dimension. So under the sketch menu, I'll choose sketch dimension. And let's make this here. This should be, let's see, 2.25 inches. So I'll type in 2.25 inches. And then the length of the riser, I just measured the one on my board. This should be three and a quarter. So 3.5 three and an eighth, sorry, 3.125 inches. There we go, and now you'll see that this riser is sort of floating around, so I want it to be centered on all of this. So to do that, let's go ahead and add a constraint, and let's, we can do this multiple ways. There's probably five ways we can do this. The way I like to do it here is apply a symmetrical constraint, so I'll choose symmetry, and it wants me to choose the two lines, and then the line that is the line of symmetry. So. I'll choose this as my first line, this is my second line, and this as the line of symmetry. So I can hit escape and see that now it's symmetric sort of left to right, but up and down it isn't positioned. And now what I can do is there's a couple other ways I could do this. I could add a, let's try a horizontal constraint between the middle of this line and the middle of this line. So if I can't pick up the midpoint of this line, you have to hold shift and then that midpoint should show up. There we go. So I can choose that midpoint and this midpoint, and now they are horizontally constrained. So now if I try to drag the rectangle around, it can't move anywhere. So that's perfect. So now what I want to do is extend this riser all the way out here to the bash guard portion that protects the nose. So I want to make sure I have a little bit of breathing room. I don't want to make this touching the deck because in all likelihood this might be a little bit off, and I don't want to have problems assembling the trucks to the board. I want to have some room to work with. So to offset this profile, I can go to the sketch drop-down menu and choose offset. And let's offset this profile by how about two millimeters. And that sort of is gonna be the starting point of where it's going to go vertical up the nose and protect it. And then let's do one more offset of that curve again. And now if I went out two millimeters, let's say I want this to be about eight millimeters thick. This might be a little thin, but we can try it. So now I wanna go 10 millimeters. There we go. And you'll see that Fusion is totally fine having you work in mixed units. I'm using inches and millimeters and it's working just fine. So now what I wanna do is connect these. So I'm gonna draw a line that extends from here to the end and from here to the end. And you'll see that I drew them sort of incorrect on purpose. And that's because I wanna make sure that they're perfectly straight. So I'll hit escape to stop drawing lines. And I can pick this line and choose horizontal and pick this line and choose horizontal. And now, they're black, indicating that they're fully constrained, and that's what we want. Also, what I want to do now is, it's probably nice if we have these holes be a little bit larger than the hole on the deck. So if we want, we can go ahead and choose our offset command, and I can offset this out. We could offset just a millimeter, or maybe even half a millimeter. And I'm gonna hit the O hotkey and do that for the rest of them. This probably isn't necessary. Probably if we just use the same diameter as the deck, the bolt will fit through just fine. But I just want to make sure I have enough room and that the bolt bolts are going to go through. So 0.5 millimeters. There we go. And then if I want, I can turn these profiles. Actually, no, we don't need to touch those right now. Perfect. So let's just stop our sketch and we can go ahead and extrude the bash guard. So I'll go to my create menu and choose extrude and let's select these profiles here. And I first just wanna extrude down to give it some thickness and I'm replacing a quarter inch 
uh, riser. So I'm just going to go by a quarter inch down. And I want to create a new body and hit OK. And now I want to extrude this portion up. And that sketch disappeared. But really, all that happened is Fusion saw that I was you done using it for the first time, so it hides it automatically. So if I want to use it again, I can open up my bash guard component and open up my sketches folder. And there's my first sketch. And I can click the light bulb to make it visible. Now what I can do is choose Extrude again from the Create menu, and I can choose this profile right here. And I can now extrude up to give this some height. Now I can make this parametric if I like, which is pretty nice. So for the extent, instead of just typing in a number here, I can say I want to go to an object. And that object is the top of the deck. And if I have an error, I can switch over to this option. It was just getting that error because the profile doesn't touch the target. This will just make it in line with it. So now it's extruding up to the very top of the deck, but maybe I want to add an offset. So to do that, I can add an offset here. So how about four millimeters? There we go. That's a little bit too much. I can drop it down to three millimeters. Doesn't really matter. And I want to make sure the operation is set to join. It's going to join these two features together to create just one solid body. So I can hide my sketch right here. And I can hide the deck. And we can see there is the bash guard. So all that's left is just to add a few features. It would probably work just fine as it is, but I want to round off some of these edges. So to do that, under the Modify drop-down menu, I'll choose Fill It. And let's select first these two edges and apply just a radius there. How about quarter inch? And let's add another radius here on these. So let's look at it from the top. 0.075, that looks good. And then lastly, let's add a radius over here. We, the whole point of this is to make it so it's not sharp and we don't want to have these sharp edges. So let's smooth those out. How about a quarter inch? There we go. And if we want, we can add a chamfer at the top. Might look a little bit nicer. So we can add a one millimeter, not an inch. How about one millimeter? Chamfer, there we go. And really, there is our bash guard. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and sketch on here and cut out some of this material in order to make it lighter if I want. But for me right now, that's that's fine as it is. So now if I want to save this out as an STL, if I want to 3D print this, all I have to do is right click on my bash guard and choose save as STL. I'll make sure the refinement is set to high and I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now I can save out my bash guard. And there it is, it's ready to be 3D printed. So there you have it. That's how you can model a 3D printable bash guard inside of Fusion 360. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I have new videos coming out every week. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.